When people talk about personal development, what they usually say is that you should be disciplined, you should hustle, you should wake up at four in the morning, you should take your cold showers, you should do a bunch of things, meditation, journaling, a bunch of things to get where you want to. But what if I told you that there's actually an easier way, a way that will make you do whatever you have to do to get the results you want to get, but in a much easier way in which you won't need to use self-discipline, in which you won't need to use the power of will that much because it will be in complete alignment to who you truly are. There is a way, and this video, I want to talk about the key to personal development the easy way so that you don't need to think that you need to work 24-7, that you need to be jumping on cold plunges if you don't want to, that you can do something else. So I started reading a book that many people told me that I should read and I finally found it and I finally bought it and it's Psycho-Cybernetics by Dr. Maxwell Maltz. So I will be recording a few videos about this book and today we're going to talk about a very important concept that's probably the most important concept. So if you only watch one of the videos in this series, watch this one because I will talk about the concept of self-image and how it influences everything in your life. So Dr. Maltz, he used to be a plastic surgeon, so he would receive people in his practice that would think that they had a problem. And sometimes, of course, they did have something that they could change that would make them look prettier, or they did go through an accident, they had a car accident, or they were burnt and they really had something to change. But there were many people that actually didn't have anything that they should change, that they could look really different, but they had something in their mind. So for them, they had a problem with their nose or with their ears or with whatever it was. And to any other person that knew them, it wasn't really a problem at all. It was nothing special, but to them, that was something that bothered them. And he even tells about some cases in which the person did have some kind of issue and he went and proceeded to operate on them. But even though they had changed physically, they still thought that they looked the same. So even though to their friends, to their family, to anyone that saw them on the street, they looked different to them. They still looked the same. They looked in the mirror and they thought they were the same. And on the other hand, he discovered that if you change the person's self image, and that usually takes about 21 days, even if he didn't really operate on them, but if he helped them change their self image or the underlying issues behind why they thought that their appearance wasn't good enough, that he could change those people and completely change them because we don't realize this, but sometimes a little thing that we change in our personalities changes everything. It's like the little domino that will drop all the other dominoes. So in this book, he talks a lot about this experience, about how he helped the people see themselves a different way and how self-image is something that's the underlying principle behind everything. So I have this little drawing that I made and here you can see you so as a sticky figure and then if you if you think about yourself as super jacked as super powerful as someone that can do whatever you want to do then you can think about yourself as the super you or the highest self the best version of yourself the best possible thing that you could be but you can also think of yourself as this measly little creature, as small, as weak, as powerless. And that will affect 
how you live your life as well. So you can either think you are super you, or you can think that you are loser you, or anything in between, really. But keep this image in your mind as we speak, because the way you see yourself is the most important thing of them all. And I'll show you a diagram here. You know, the way we act and the way we think is deeply ingrained with the beliefs we have about ourselves. Not, o not only about ourselves, but about the world. We have, when we're growing up and with all the cultural conditioning that we face from our family, society, school, we end up learning certain patterns of behavior. So whenever we have some cues from the environment, your brain, or more accurately, your nervous system will fire some patterns of neurons throughout your brain. And those patterns are recognized as concepts in your mind. So it's like when you fire a pattern, for instance, for water, for first, for um, love, whatever it is, you will form these neural pathways in your brain. And the more you fire those neurons together, the stronger they get. They're like a muscle. So the, the, if you are constantly thinking about good things, about success, about being powerful, about being loved, about being worthy of things, then you can have these neural pathways very strong. And likewise, if you're thinking that you are a failure, if you're thinking that you're not worthy of something, you will do the opposite. You will feel like, not feel, your neural pathways towards these things will be stronger. So like in a highway or like in a plumbing system, the water, or in this case, the energy, the cognitive energy, the flow, will tend to go to the places where it's easier. And if you're conditioned to thinking a certain way, you will flow your thoughts towards that, those patterns. And if you're conditioned another way, you'll flow them towards another pattern. So back to this, here we have our thoughts and our actions, right? And I, I made a feedback loop between thoughts and actions because when we do something, we influence our thoughts. And when we think something, we also influence our actions. So it's two-way street. But it goes deeper. We have actually a deeper layer over here before the beliefs, before the things that we are conditioned. And I'll put it over here. And it has to do with the sense of self-image that we were talking about. So there's this part of the brain that's called the RAS. I've already talked about it in previous videos. So the reticular activation system. And what the RAS does is it's a filter. So it filters the information from the environment. And this can be any type of information, really. It can be if you see something, if you see a potential predator, for example, if you hear something, if you, if you hear someone say something, for instance, and you don't like it or you like it. So the RAS filters everything that we perceive because we perceive a gazillion bytes of information every second, it would be impossible to consciously think of everything. So we have this filter to help us. So for instance, if you are in the middle of a crowd and someone calls your name, you will perceive it differently than anyone else over there that doesn't share your name because for you, your name is important. You conditioned your RAS to think that your name, be it Peter, be it 
Maria, be it whatever your name is, is important. So anytime you hear your name, the RAS will fire and it will say, this is important. I need to pay attention. So you will start paying more attention. You will sense this more acutely. But back to the sense of self-image, it's behind the, this even. It helps you train your RAS. So it helps you train the filter so it knows what is important after all. You can train it. That's the thing that most people don't know about. And that's why we suffer so much in modern society. Because if you never do this, if you never go back and think about what is truly important to you and why it's important to you and recondition or reprogram your subconscious nervous system, you will always be living in the past. So you will always be living, redoing the things that you already did. For instance, you will probably be using the conditioning you learned when you were a little kid and believing the things that you believed when you were a little kid, when you were frail, when you were actually the picture of the loser you because you really didn't have any power. You really couldn't do anything. You couldn't really possibly run away and fend for yourself. You couldn't. You were small. You were frail. You had to believe what the adults said. So we don't want to live in this past conditioning because Let's face it, if you were already truly happy, satisfied with everything that's going on in your life, you wouldn't be watching this. You wouldn't be faking of self-development. You would think that you are enough already. You would think that you are awesome already. And you are, that's the thing. You are, you just need to get rid of this conditioning from the past and find the true you that's lying there underneath. So you, you need to go back to the self image that you already have and you need to change it. You need to get a new self image that's more in tune to what you want with your life now, not with what people used to say about you 20 years ago. You don't need that. And this is a thing also why Many people say that you should move out of your city, that you should find new people as you grow up, because many times your old friends or your family will talk about you like you were still 15, but you're not 15 anymore. I mean, some of you might be, but most of you aren't. Most of you are 25, 30, and you don't want to be that same person. When someone says you've changed, you're happy about it because you're happy that they noticed that you changed, that you actually grew, that you're not the same person, the same person that's conditioned by those things from the past. No, now you're a new person. Now you have new beliefs and you have a new self image already. But if you want to go into even deeper transformations, you need to come back here to your self image and transform your self image so that it's aligned with whatever you want to get. Because the thing is, our brains, they are a go getting machine, a go achieving machine. And whatever you told your brain that you are, it will believe you. Even if it's not true, even if objective, objectively it's not true, it will believe you. And it will try to prove that what you're saying is right, that it's true. So if you think you're a failure, your brain will be conditioned or your subconscious will be conditioned to try to prove that you're right. 
this is why people self-sabotage because even though they want or they say they want something deep down they don't really want it deep down they think they are a failure and if they never sit down and try to integrate that shadow those aspects from their past and which they did think they were a failure because something happened and they felt powerless and they ingrained this into them. And now they think that they can never get over it. They can't. But to do this, you need to be willing to face it, to truly look deep inside, to think, why am I not worthy of success? Why am I not worthy of whatever it is that you want. Do you want to travel? Do you want to have a nice family? Do you want to have a nice partner? Why am I not worthy of having a great partner that loves me for who I am and that helps me and that I can form a great bond with? Why not? Because maybe somewhere deep down the line, 20, 30 years ago, you had a bad experience and then you ingrained that into your brain and you think that you need to relive it and you will relive it. That's the thing. You will relive every bad experience because like they say, the past tends to repeat yourself itself and you will relive, relive it because it's familiar to you and we crave what's familiar to us. But if you really, really want to change, we need to go down deep inside of us, find out what's wrong, pick up those weeds and tell them we are not our past. We are going to do things different from now on. From now on, I'm super me. I'm the strong one. I identify as super me, so I will be him. So for instance, if you want to get in shape, you will start conditioning yourself. Every night, you will be thinking about it. You will think of yourself going to the gym and exercising or going to the park and running. And you will see yourself with your dream body and you will feel it like you were already super strong, like you were already super fit. You will feel that. You need to feel it because when you do this, you're not only getting the prefrontal cortex, the more rational parts of your brain, you are also using the mammalian brain, the emotional brain to help you. And since we have neurons all over our body, you will be conditioning your whole nervous system towards whatever you want to achieve. And this is another important point. Our brain, our mind, doesn't really know the difference between imagination and reality or the things in the external world. So if you're doing this exercise of visualizing whatever you want to achieve and seeing yourself, especially seeing yourself as the kind of person that achieves those things. So for instance, if you see yourself as an athlete, it will be much easier to go and train every day to try to sleep well, to eat well, to get over something like alcohol or cigarettes or whatever vice that you might have. But if you don't think of yourself as an athlete, it will be much harder. Whatever you think of yourself as, you will start incorporating all of the ideas and all of the beliefs that you associate to that into your life. So if you think you are a good son, you will incorporate everything that you believe that being a good son is all about. If you think that you are a failure, you will incorporate everything that a failure is all about. So it's about crafting very consciously the self-image of who you really want to be, who you really, the being the kind of person who achieves the things that you want to achieve. And you need to think about things that are really true to you, that really 
would help you get out of bed every day and just jump out of bed. And you need to really think of that kind of thing, that kind of deeply ingrained, that deep purpose of yours, why you are here in this earth. Because otherwise, if you're just picking a useless goal that you don't really like, that you can't really get behind, that doesn't really make sense to you, and it's pointless. It's a pointless endeavor. So you need to really choose things that are true to you and things that will really help you get out of bed and things that when you visualize them, you can really feel it and you can really, you, you kind of feel pushed towards that reality. So you need to find these things and then you need to think about what kind of person I need to be to achieve that. And then things start happening. It will be much easier for you to take the actions that you need to take because you will be in resonance with that type of person that you want to become and the type of person that achieves the goals you want to achieve. So this video was about self-image and about how we can influence our self-image because our brains, our minds will try to turn it into a self-fulfilling prophecy. So if you have a good self-image, you will always look for opportunities. You will always look for good things. But at the same time, if you have a negative self-image, you will always look for ways to sabotage yourself subconsciously. So you really need to draw out, develop a good self-image that's in tune with whatever you want to achieve and use it in your favor. And if you want to know more about these things, just wait a little while because the next video will be about something else of the book, Psycho-Cybernetics.